In this movie, we're picking up right where we left off with the last movie, and that's looking at a basic idea of how bones work and how you use them to control shapes, whether they're drawn, whether they're imported, or whether they're actually photos as well. We're creating a diving board right here simply to explore some of the do's and don'ts of bone construction, and we'll cover some things that aren't actually in some of the anime documentation. We've got two layers, layer two, which is a bone layer, and it's got a little bone icon. We inserted that. We've got our layer that is our drawing layer. Let's go ahead and name these things something a little more meaningful. There's two ways to do that. With the layer selected, you can click on the little ellipsis or those three dots, or you can double click on the layer. I'll double click on the layer. It pops up. Let me move that over, and we'll just name this diving board. It becomes so important as you start working with more and more complex creations, animations, and rigging to very concisely name everything. And this is just a routine worthy of getting into to make your life easier later on. So I'll name this one board bone, the bone layer that is, and click OK. So now we've got a bone layer. We also have a diving board layer. If we want to select multiple bones, it's nice because we can go ahead and go up and use the selection tools that we've got. But let's start adding our bones right now. With the bone layer selected, we'll come over here to our tools palette on the left hand side and we'll see that we only have two options. We have the select bone, keyboard shortcut B, and we have an add bone, which is the keyboard shortcut A. So I mentioned in the last movie, this is the exact same keyboard shortcut when you add a point with the drawing tools. You also add a bone with the letter A. Just thought I'd do that, help you remember it very easy to add bone. I'll press the keyboard shortcut A right now. We'll watch our tool change into a little crosshairs. And the way you add bones and how large they are is determined by clicking once to set the origin of the bone and then dragging to drag it out. So I'll click once and I'll drag and we'll see the bone change in size. From that point right there I'm going to click again and drag. I'll release then I'll click again and drag. So now what we've got is a diving board with three bones attached. Some other tools have become highlighted now. There's a bone translation tool, keyboard shortcut T, same as the keyboard shortcut for the translation tool for the drawing tools. So some nice kind of uh, synergy, no need to learn new keyboard shortcuts for this. We've got our rotation tool, same thing, keyboard shortcut R. We have our Manipulate Bones tool, and this is the one you'll probably use more than any other, both through your animation, but also while you're setting up bones. There's a couple others that we'll take a look at a little bit later on as we start getting into combining different bones into a full skeleton for your object. I'm going to go ahead and select the Bone Manipulation tool. It's over here, keyboard shortcut letter Z for that. When I click that, we get these little um, colored areas around here. And we'll explain those in just a minute coming up, but I wanted to point out one of these important features for you to file away in the back of your mind when you're working with projects, and that is the object you've drawn versus the bones that are controlling it. So we've got three bones here. If I want this board to flex, I'm using the bone manipulation tool right here. When I pull on this, it flexes down, and we see the board move down a little bit. I'll drag it out straight to make it go back a little bit straight here. But you'll notice that it didn't actually bend in the middle. Instead, it sheared. It just moved down. We aren't getting any flex in here. And this is one of those important unwritten things that you need to know about Anime Studio Pro. I'm going to go ahead and collapse my bone layer over here. And I'm going to duplicate this whole layer so I don't have to redraw anything. I'll do that by pressing the Duplicate Layer button. And now we have board bone 2. What I'll do now is with the layer tools, I'm going to go ahead and use the layer translate. This one's keyboard shortcut 1. I'm going to go ahead and drag this layer down right here so we can see it and compare it to the one above. Now what I'll do is come back to, let me expand this with the disclosure triangle, to the diving board object in that layer. We have access to the drawing tools now, and I'm going to go ahead and select the Add Point tool. And here's the reason why. Again, that's keyboard shortcut A. In order to get good distortion, good bends when you're working with bones and objects, 
there needs to be enough information for anime to know what to do with it. On the preceding one, there was only four points in this rectangle, which means that when anime is trying to bend it, it only has four points of reference to think about when it's doing the bending. So instead, I'm going to go ahead on this new layer down here, add some points to it. I'll go ahead and click at the flex point of each bone, where they get skinny and they join together, is where that's going to bend. I'll do that on both sides simply by clicking on the line. And with that completed, now I'm going to go ahead and come back and use the bone manipulation tool. When I click that, we'll see now that when I move the bone, the board begins to bend very believably. And this again is where uh, anime is a little bit different than some other drawing programs. Normally in other programs like Corel Draw or Adobe Illustrator, even Adobe Photoshop, when you work with shapes on a path that have been drawn, you get these little control handles that come out to the side. You don't get that in Anime Studio. It creates those handles, you just can't see them, so that the line behaves as if it actually has bezier handles, so there are no adjustment handles for that. But now when we grab our bones with this, we can go ahead and see some very interesting motion. We can start animating. That's one of those important requirements of creating your shapes and your characters in anime, making sure there's enough points or nodes for anime to know how to bend that. In our next movie, we'll go ahead and take a look at some of these other options and what these uh, little areas around here actually mean.